welcome back to our uh, continued series on the glories of our beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Nivishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Deshatarne, O glories to Sri Prabhupada, the revealer of Sri Vrindavan Dham. So we have been giving our um, Vrindavan lecture series for um, a little over a year and a half now. We've tried to be consistent uh, with two lectures a week. And why the consistency? That's explained very nice in Srimad Bhagavatam, um, the king of scriptures, Garantara Srimad Bhagavatam, in a verse that's um, well known to most speakers on the Bhagavatam. It's a Srimad Bhagavatam, 1 2 18. Nasta Pariyeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki. Quote By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service under the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact." Unquote. <clears throat> now, a key word in that famous verse is nityam, meaning um, regularly or consistency. <laughs> um, if we regularly hear Krishna Kata, we will become purified. And in a purified state, uh, we can awaken our love for Radha and Krishna and live with them eternally in Sri Vrindavan Dham, in Goloka Vrindavan, with Sri Prabhupada. <laughs> Nartam Dasakur is always stressing this throughout his, um, his books. And this is the goal of life. He's just keeping us on track, so to speak. Um, there's a, a few pertinent verses like that in his Pratana, um, Song 27, just to keep us fixed here. He writes, O Lord Hari, when will my condition change so that I can abandon everything and go to Vrindavan? When will I give up wealth, followers, son and wife, and go to Vrindavan? When will I forget all my distress and simply reside in Vrindavan? When will I maintain my livelihood by begging like a bee? When will I consider the water of the Jamuna as nectarian and drink it to my full satisfaction? When will I bathe in the waters of Radhakund and lie down on the banks of Shamakund? When will I travel to the twelve forests where the various pastimes of Radha and Krishna took place and there roll on the ground? When will I fall at the feet of Brajabhasis and inquire about the locations of Lord Krishna's pastimes? When will I see the place where Krishna ate with his cowherd boyfriends? When will I visit the forests and sub-forests of Vrindavan? Hankering in this way, Naratam Das desires the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna." <clears throat> So in that very beautiful song, Naratam Das Thakur writes, When will I fall at the feet of the Brajabhasis and inquire about the location of Krishna's pastimes? So today I would like to share a pastime that has come down through thousands of years in uh, Braj culture and is a favorite of all the Brajabhasis who are living here. They often recount it. And it is called Mudurika Chori Lila. So sweet. Mudurika Chori Lila. Mudurika means a, a ring, and Chori, you probably can imagine, means stolen. It's an extremely sweet pastime, wherein Krishna steals Shimati Radharani's ring. So once in Vrindavan, Shrimati Radharani was thinking, in a few days, the auspicious uh, month of Kartik will begin. 
and I will once again dance with my beloved Krishna in the rasa dance. Therefore, <clears throat> I want to learn um, a new uh, beautiful form of dance. So gathering some of her uh, closest maidservants, she said, um, girls, I want to perfect the art of dancing. So today, I'm going to see Shama Sundar and learn to dance. <clears throat> but her maidservants were shocked. They replied, but Radhika, why go to see Sham? He's actually not a very good dancer. We know because we ourselves have had to teach him dance steps during the Rasa dance performances, during the Rasa dance Leela. We have to teach him some dance steps. We are, in fact, his nritya gurus. That means um, we are his dance teachers. If you really want to improve your dancing, Radha, then let us call some professional dancers whose families have performed dance for generations. And Vishakasaki, she added, Radha, there is no need to take dance lessons from Shamasundar. Why? Because you long ago perfected the art of nritya, or dance. You are the best dancer of all. Beloved Radha, the Lord of Desire, Kamadev, dances on your eyebrows. All the hairs in your body dance like Nataraj Shiva. Your nose dances like a drop on the lotus petal. Your body dances like a creeper in the windy season. And your ankle bells dance like the beautiful Apshara, Ramba. We mentioned her the other day, Ramba. There's no need for you to go to Shamasundar to learn the art of dance. However, if you insist on going, then all of us will go with you. For we do not trust the Shamasundar Krishna. <laughs> but Shirada was adamant. She said, no, I'm going alone. But then Vishaka said, Radha, wouldn't it be better if we just called Shamasundra here to teach you, if you want? To which Shirada replied, so beautifully, <clears throat> quote, My beloved Vishaka, I know that you are my well-wisher, but when has anyone seen a water well go to one who is thirsty? It's a thirsty person who goes to a water well to drink. Therefore, I want to perfect the art of dance by going to see Shamsundar. <laughs> Such a beautiful analogy. Oh, boy. So, finally, Shirada's maidservants, they relented and they agreed. So, to prepare her for her dance lessons from Shamsundar, they dressed Shirada in a very uh, elaborate uh, dance costume, clothes, along with four types of ankle bells. Now, when I heard this past time, I was thinking, four types of ankle bells? And I did some research in the Institute, and um, I found that Sri Radha is uh, famous for these four types of ankle bells that she wears during her dancing. The first type is called uh, Nupura, which means that those ankle bells, they make the sounds of kartals. The second type is called kodula. And those ankle bells make the sounds of groups of swans. And the third type of ankle bells are called bichuya, bichuya. And they make the sounds of flocks of cuckoo birds. Remember we heard about cuckoo couples the other day? <laughs> so these ankle bells, they make the sound of flocks of uh, cuckoo birds. And the fourth type is called Gunguru, Gunguru. And these ankle bells, they make the sound, make a sound like uh, Saraswati's Veena. <laughs> so those are the four types of ankle bells. Now you know. <clears throat> so then, in preparation, um, her maidservants dressed her in appropriate uh, ornaments, Shringar. And that we'll discuss a little later on, those, those ornaments. There's something special. 
And finally, as per her desire, Shirada went down alone to the Jamuna River, where she found her beloved Krishna standing on the banks of the Jamuna with folded hands. And what was he doing? Singing Radharani's glories. <laughs> so there they uh, spent time together, you know, um, telling stories and joking and laughing, until finally Krishna said, uh, Shirada, let us dance now. In fact, I will teach you some beautiful new steps that you can use in our next rasa dance in Kartik. So needless to say, Radharani was overjoyed with Krishna's invitation because that's really why she had come to see him. So Krishna continued, um, My dearest Radha, as you know, um, as you know very well, there are seven uh, basic principles of dance. And he repeated them. He said, the first is called griva nritya. It involves uh, dancing with neck movements. The second type is called netra nritya. <clears throat> it means uh, dancing with the eyes. The third type of dancing is called madhura nritya. It means dancing with um, expressions. And the fourth type is mudra nritya, which means uh, employing uh, hands, hand gestures in the dancing. And the fifth type of dance is called pada nritya. It means uh, dancing with the feet. And the sixth type is called katin nritya. It means uh, dancing with the waist. And the seventh and last type is called um, sarvan nritya dancing with the whole body. So Krishna spoke like that. And besides this, Shama Sundar continued, there are three beats and seven notes. So my, now, my dear Radha, I will show you the finer methods to employ these seven forms of dance. You just watch me. So, um, as the Rajabhasis tell it, as Krishna began, you know, very artistic dance moves, Sri Radha was just totally absorbed in, in watching him dance in this way. She watched him very carefully. <clears throat> so after a while, Krishna stopped and he said, now you try. And as Sri Radha began her dance, based on the new subtle movements Krishna had shown her, Krishna sang, and kept the rhythm by clapping his hands. I thought that was really sweet. Krishna sang and kept the rhythm by uh, clapping his hands. So we can understand after some time, you know, Radharani became tired. So um, Sri Krishna suggested that they walk around the, uh, the beautiful nearby forest of uh, Nidhivan, Nidhivan. And as they did so, uh, Shirada observed uh, the beauty of the different kunjas, like the, the pleasure groves. She was absorbed in seeing all these beautiful kunjas. Now, here's where the plot thickens. While she was absorbed in that way, clever Krishna secretly stole a most beautiful ring from her hand, from one of her fingers. And it was uh, Radharani's uh, mirror ring. This mirror ring was given to her by her mother, Kirti Sundari, on one of her birthdays. It was one of her most prized possessions. Krishna knew it. <laughs> but she didn't see him steal it. He was very clever. Now later that day, when Shirada, you know, finally returned to, to Varshana, her, her maidservants crowded around her and they asked um, Radha, how was your dance class? So smiling, Sri Radha replied, it was most wonderful. And as the day was you know, going on, um, her maidservants uh, wanted to change her clothes from the, the, the dress clothes to, to, to other dress, other clothes. And um, as they were doing so, they were taking off her ornaments. Again, that's called Sringara. Now, in some research I did, I found out something really amazing. 
Every day, Shimati Radharani is dressed in exactly 64 ornaments, like jewels. And these 64 ornaments are kept in a very special box called Saj Samhar. Saj Samhar. <laughs> That's the box they keep the ornaments in. And the person in charge of that box is Vishaka Saki, one of her services. And one of the specific duties of these um, maid servants, these girls, is to count all the jewelry before decorating Shirata with them in the morning. And then to count all the ornaments again when taking them off of her in the afternoon or the evening. <clears throat> so that day, when these, this afternoon, when the gopis were counting the ornaments Radha had worn to her dance class, they were shocked to find one missing. It never happens. They counted only 63 ornaments, and we know why. <laughs> so counting again, they discovered that Radharani's mirror ring was missing. So Vishaka Saki quickly understood that the thief could have only been Krishna. So she said to Sri Radha, Radha, Shamsundar has stolen your ring. But Sri Radha would have nothing to do with it. She didn't believe that. She said, <clears throat> No, Vishaka, Krishna would never even think of stealing any of my jewelry. And to that, Vishaka said, and it's so wonderful, quote, O most innocent Radha, you do not know him. We know him. He's the biggest thief in the world. He can steal the carillion from the eyes of a person who walks just next to him. What to speak about a ring? He's the master of thieves. Just see, he's stolen our butter, <laughs> our clothes, our hearts, the sins of his devotees, and now the ring of the daughter of the king, Brishamanu. You, <laughs> believe me, Radha, I am your royal advisor. I know him very well. So at that point, Vishaka just stormed out of uh, Shirada's room and went to find Krishna in Vrindavan. And knowing his daily routine at this, you know, in the late afternoon, she found him herding his cows at nearby Govardhan Hill with his friends. And her anger had not subsided even the slightest. <laughs> and approaching Krishna in a fury, she stood before him and she commanded, Krishna, give me back Shirada's ring. So Krishna, he said, how can I possibly know what you're talking about? I am an innocent seven-year-old boy. What do I know about young girls' rings? Is it a finger ring, a toe ring, an ear ring, a nose ring? So Vishaka said, I caught you. You're saying you don't know anything about girls' rings, but you mentioned four specific rings, <laughs> you scoundrel. <laughs> so you come with me. You can state your innocence before Shirada's friends, and let's see what they decide. Now Krishna was happy with that, that order. <laughs> Smiling, he said, OK, let's go. So later, when um, Vishaka and, and Krishna arrived at a, a chosen rendezvous near Varshana, Radharani's friends immediately surrounded Krishna, and they began, you know, searching through his, through his clothes, through his garments for the, for the missing ring. And finally, after some time, one gopi found that ring, the mirror ring, in his waist cloth, and she took it and she held it up. She said, girls, I found the ring. This Krishna is a thief. So Krishna was caught, to use the modern term, you know, red-handed. 
And he had no excuse to defend himself, and he stood embarrassed amongst all the gopis. So at that moment, Lalita spoke up, and she said, Just see, Shirada, he did steal your ring. Now you must punish him. So Radha agreed. She said, You are right, Lalita, and the biggest punishment for an unkind lover is not to talk to them. So I will never talk to Krishna again. Never again will I talk to Krishna. <laughs> so Vishaka liked that. She stepped forward and she proclaimed, because many Brajabhasis had gathered because of this commotion. She said, Dear residents of Vrindavan, this case is over now. Radha will not speak to Krishna ever again. And then Vishaka, she, she turned to Krishna and she pointed towards Govardhan Hill. She told Krishna, you leave now, you go back from where you came from. And Krishna left, <laughs> embarrassed. So, a little later, um, Vishaka said to Radha, Shri Radha, this is a good time for you to take revenge on Krishna. Let's make a plan to steal from him as he stole from you. To steal from him as he stole from you. But Shirada replied, it's so sweet, Vishaka, I don't know how to steal. I don't know how to steal. So Vishaka, all these Sakis are very protective of Shirada. She said, then Radha, I will teach you how to steal. So Vishaka taught Radharani the art of stealing from her lover for the purpose of enhancing loving pastimes. Wow. Not like stealing in this world. Vishaka taught Radharani the art of stealing from her lover for the purpose of enhancing loving pastimes. <clears throat> <clears throat> So a few days later, <clears throat> a few days later, uh, Krishna was uh, falling asleep alongside his very close friend Madhu Mangala in the Vrindavan forest, again somewhere near Govardhan Hill, after their noon lunch. You know, the, the coward boys, they always take a nap after their noon lunch. And as Madhu Mangala began dozing off, he saw that Krishna was already in a very deep sleep. Krishna had gone to sleep before him. So he thought, well, if Krishna wakes up before me, he may run off to the herd of cows and I'll miss all the fun. So he did something really well, funny. Madhu Mangal laid down next to Krishna and tied one of his legs to one of Krishna's legs. He was thinking, uh, in this way, when Krishna wakes up, I'll wake up too. And then he fell fast asleep. <clears throat> now an hour later, by the arrangement of uh, Purnamasi, Yogamaya, who, as we've discussed many times, daily organizes um, all the blissful pastimes in Braj with her assistant, Vrinda Devi, by Purnamasi's arrangement, who showed up where Krishna and Madhu Mangal were deep in sleep? <clears throat> I'm sure you can guess. Srimati Radharani and her teacher in the art of transcendental theft, Srimati Vishaka Saki. The two of them showed up. So as Krishna and Madhu Mangal slept very soundly in their afternoon nap on Vishaka's cue, Sri Radha very uh, uh, stealthily and slowly approached them and deftly stole, listen to this, Radharani stole Krishna's peacock feather, his favorite black chatter, his stick for controlling cows, his ankle bells, and his flute. She stole his flute. <laughs> and then 
Vishaka herself came forward and with some scissors cut Madhu Mangal's newly grown mustache unevenly, snip, 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 here and there. Now, one might question how one of Krishna's cowherd boyfriends, you know, there are boys, could have a mustache? Yeah, that I had to do some research. Because <laughs> it's part of the Leela. And, and, and I thought, oh, I have to explain this one. Well, the answer is that uh, Madhu Mangal is much older than Krishna. In fact, he's older than all the cowherd boys, for that matter. He is the son of Sandipani Muni, who came with his grandmother, Purnamasi, to Vrindavan from Ujjain. And Madhu Mangal is exactly eight years and 56 days older than Krishna. Big difference. Eight years and 56 days older than Krishna. That makes him about 14 and a half, or let's you know, say almost 15 years old. Old enough to have a mustache. I know when I was 15, I had a mustache. That was the 1960s, the hippie era. <laughs> I had a mustache, 15. Anyway, so after their exploits, Radha and Vishaka quickly ran away, laughing and giggling all the way back to Varshana. Now you can just imagine the shock when Krishna woke up and saw Madhu Mangal's funny mustache. And what's more, when Madhu Mangal saw Krishna without his peacock feather, his black chatter, his stick, <laughs> his ankle bells, and his flute, <laughs> needless to say, Krishna was devastated. But he had an idea who the thief might be, or the thieves might be. Uh, he said to Madhu Mangal, this must be the gopi's revenge for my stealing Shirada's mirror ring. But it's not an appropriate act of revenge for I just stole a ring. But the gopi stole my peacock feather, my black chatter, and my stick, my ankle bells, and my flutes. <laughs> and then Krishna said, Madhu Mangal, I wouldn't be surprised if she, Radhika herself, was part of this conspiracy. <laughs> Madhu Mangal, somehow we have to get back my precious paraphernalia as soon as possible. So Krishna and Madhu Mangal, um, they, they sat down and they uh, quickly came up with a plan to get everything back. And what was that plan? No, it's really interesting. They dressed up and disguised themselves as old gopis, old gopis. You know, we've related a number of pastimes this, during this last year where in order to approach, Krishna, to approach Radha, who's angry with Krishna, she's in man, you know. In order for Krishna to approach her, he disguises himself as a young gopi. And then he has access to come and ask for forgiveness. So lots of, you know, new gopi pastimes. Krishna is in a, as a fresh, beautiful gopi. Here, Krishna and, and, and Madhu Mangal, they disguise themselves as old gopis. And um, the Brajabhasis say, they hobbled their way all the way to Varshana, <laughs> where they sat crying for hours outside of King Bhishabhanu's palace, where Radha lives. Now Krishna, disguised as an old gopi, was wailing, was crying very loudly. O oh, Sham Sundar, where are you? O oh, Sham Sundar, where are you? I'm feeling so much separation from you. <laughs> so eventually, Shirada heard these uh, old gopis' cries, and she's sometimes described as the tender hearted counterpart of Krishna. Mm -mm. me, she's often described like this. She's tender heart, she has a lot of compassion. So, feeling some compassion for these two old gopis, who she could hear from her quarters, she came running outside followed by Lalita and Vishaka. And Radharani approached 
the old gopi who was crying for Shamasundar, and she said, Dear one, what is your name? But this old gopi was too immersed in feelings of separation to reply. So Sri Radha asked the second old gopi, Madhu Mangal, Darling, please tell me, what is your friend's name? But Krishna and Madhu Mangal had not discussed in their plan <laughs> what names they would use in this ruse. <laughs> they forgot that detail. So Madhu Mangal, he whispered in the old gopi's ear, Krishna's ear, um, Brother, we didn't decide what your name was in all of this. Um, how should I answer Sri Radha? <laughs> She's asking your name. So Krishna took a little break from his <laughs> the wailing <laughs> as the gopi, and he whispered back, um, well, tell her that I am Shaima Premi Saki. Such a beautiful name. Shaima Premi Saki. So Madhu, Madhu Mangal, he looked up and he said to Sri Radha, <clears throat> well, well, her name is Shaima Premi Saki. So then Sri Radha, who herself was feeling so much distress, you know, for these two old ladies, turned to Vishaka and said, my dear Vishaka, what should we do to pacify these two old gopis? They're feeling so much separation from Krishna, I fear they're going to die. So at this point, Vishaka was also fooled by what was going on. <laughs> so she had to take a minute to think how to, um, what to deal with, how to deal with the situation, these poor old gopis. She got an idea. And she whispered, she, then she whispered in Sri Radha's ear, Radha, why not disguise yourself as Krishna, wearing all the things that we stole from him today? That will certainly convince these two old girls, these old gopis, that you're actually Krishna. That will pacify them. Pacify their feelings. They'll think that Krishna's there. So Radha smiled, she agreed, yes, very nice plan, and she quickly ran back to her quarters. Minutes later she returned, disguised as Krishna, she must have had to put on some bluish cosmetics, and she wore clothes like Krishna, but the main thing is, she was wearing Krishna's peacock feather, his favorite black chowder, she had his stick, she was wearing his ankle bells, and she had his flute, which she was playing most expertly. So hoping to calm the old gopis down, she stood before them in Turibanga Sundar, threefold bending form. And she said to the gopis, Dear ones, I, Sri Krishna, have come. So moments later, <laughs> as Radha stood there with all of Krishna's stolen apparel, Krishna jumped up. He threw off his disguise as Shaima Premi Staki, <laughs> the old gopi. And the Brajibhasi say, in the wink of an eye, in the wink of an eye, he grabbed back all his paraphernalia from Sri Radha. <laughs> he grabbed everything back in the wink of an eye. Now when this happened, everyone present, meaning, you know, Radharani and Lalita and Vishaka and all the other Sakis and the Gopis and many cowherd boys had come because there was a big commotion. Everyone burst out laughing and applauded Krishna's tricky ways. Everyone present burst out laughing and applauded Krishna's tricky ways. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> this is the, another one of those playful pastimes, Kali, playful past. Everyone enjoyed what Krishna did, how he tricked everybody and got his paraphernalia back. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so, but, oh, there's one more thing. Only Madhu Mangal wasn't laughing. Because when he took off his disguise, everyone could see his funny, clipped, mustache. So 
Madhu Mangal started crying in embarrassment. And taking pity on him, Vishaka uh, waved her hand, and Madhu Mangal's young, <laughs> full mustache appeared again. And then she very kindly gave him a boon. Smiling, she said, Madhu Mangal, you will never lose your mustache. Don't worry. And even if someone in the future tries to cut it, they will not be able to do so. Even you will not be able to cut your mustache. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So this uh, beautiful pastime, again it's called Mundrika Chori Lila. The pastime of the stolen ring. Shri Brajabhumi Shri Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Vrindavaneshwari Shri Mati Radharmani Ki Shri Krishna Bhagavan Ki <laughs> Hare Krishna So I hope that this um, pastime has watered your Bhakti Lata Bij your seed of devotion in your heart for Krishna and it's grown a few inches <laughs> So let us um, conclude today in much the same way that we started today with some prayers um, by Naratam, Naratam Das Thakur and his Prathana meant to um, increase our desire to come to Braj and live in Vrindavan forever serving Sri Prabhupada in his service to the divine couple in his service to Krishna Bhara in his servant to service to all the different residents and Vrindavan, whomever he may be. We will go there and we will serve Prabhupada in his service. We are servants of the servants of the servants of the servants. That will be most relishable. So Naratam is always encouraging us, don't forget Braj, remember Braj, go back home, back to Godhead. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. So let him speak to us. Song 29 of Prajana. He writes, O Lord Hari, when will I reside in Vrindavan and behold the beauty of the divine couple, Radha and Krishna? When will I give up the happiness of sleeping on a luxurious bed? And when will I smear my body with the, with the dust of Braj? When will I give up enjoying the six palatable foodstuffs? And when will I beg Madhukari like a bee in Braj to maintain my body? When will I wander from forest to forest doing parikama? And tired, when will I take rest on the banks of the Jamuna? I will cool myself down beneath the shade of Vamsivat and sit in the Kunjas with other Vaishnavas. Naratam Das says, when will that day come that I actually give up everything and go to Vrindavan. Please allow us to follow you, Srila Naratam Das We also want to be in Vrindavan. That's our goal. Prabhu, thank you so much. This is a very nectarian pastime, and I will um, study some more and come up with some more pastimes to encourage you on the path back home, back to Godhead. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Shishi Gornitai ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram ki, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar ki, Brindavaneshwari, Shimati Radharani ki, Shishi Gornitai ki, Shri Mayapurdam ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagya ki, and Shri Rupapad ki. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Very well. Jay Jay Sisi Radhe.